In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the more popular commodity markets and what factors can drive their price changes. Hello, I'm David Jones. This is uh, my regular video with Trading 2 on 2 where we, we cut through some of the market jargon and trading terms. Uh, and this week, we're going to take a look at the commodity markets. In recent weeks, we looked at the stock markets and um, currencies. So I thought commodities would be a timely one to do. Um, there's a whole range of different commodities that can be traded. In reality, with most sort of private investors, retail traders, they tend to stick to, to only one or two markets when it comes to commodities. But um, to start off, let's have a top-down view of the different types of commodity markets there are out there and look at three of these in a bit more detail. We can probably split commodities down into a few sections. Um, first of all, I think energy commodities. These tend to be some of the most popular. So we have the likes of um, US crude oil. Then we have uh, the UK flavor, Brent crude, very popular markets when it comes to commodities. Then we have things like, for example, um, natural gas, you know, is another energy market. Then we have the various metal commodities. I mean, I mean gold is, I think, by far and away the most popular one here. But we also have, of course, silver, uh, platinum, copper, all that sort of stuff. And then finally, we have a really wide grouping, um, agricultural commodities. And I haven't left myself enough room on here to write all these out. But you have things like um, wheat, soybeans. Uh, what else could we put in here? Coffee. Uh, and then you have um, livestock, uh, cattle, hogs. That sort of thing. Okay, so the whole the whole commodity section covers a real widespread of markets. But, but just let's, let's take a look at just three. Let's pick one from each section and look at it in a bit more detail. Let's take a look at oil. Probably um, the most popular of the commodities for uh, for retail traders. Um, it's something that that most of us will interact with on a regular basis and we'll be sensitive to it because clearly where oil is trading affects the price we pay when we fill our car up uh, with petrol. So that, that has an impact, you know, and, and it can be a pretty volatile market. Just over the last five months or so, um, we've seen the price of oil rally by, by almost 50% from about $42 a barrel um, up to the, sort of the mid-60s. So it can have some really big moves, some really big trends, and that does appeal to people. So what drives oil? Global demand is an obvious one. When economies are doing well and they're strong and um, people are spending money and there's lots of goods getting produced by factories and these goods are getting flown around the world, oil is involved in all of those processes. So when economies are expanding, we normally see the price of oil um, trading pretty high. You know, if there's a threat of recession or a real slump, that's when we'll see pressure on the oil price. At the beginning of 2015, we saw a big slide for the price of oil because of concerns about the Chinese economy uh, slowing down and their factories not producing as much. So clearly uh, that has an impact. It's also, of course, a market that is um, very susceptible to political instability around the world. If a major oil producing region uh, sees maybe a change in government or an unhappy population, then the worry is, is that going to affect uh, the supply of oil? So that's another one where um, we could see the price get you know, pretty volatile, you know, depending on how the various oil producing regions around the world are doing politically. OPEC also plays its part. That's the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. So it's uh, 12 oil producing countries that control something like 60% of the world's um, oil experts. So what they decide to do, if they decide to restrict demand or maybe increase restrict supply or increase supply by opening up the taps, that's also going to have an impact uh, on the price of oil, you know, just from a simple supply and demand point of view. So um, what OPEC says and what they're thinking about is another thing that's followed really closely in the oil market. Natural disasters can also play their part. You know, if, if a part of the world is hit by, for example, a hurricane that is going to affect oil production, that's another thing that's going to potentially push the price of oil higher. So all of these things go into the mix. Then we have the straightforward actions of buyers and sellers and their expectations to create the day-to-day -day fluctuations in the price of oil. I think gold is always a bit of a strange one to maybe to classify as, as just as a metal because uh, plenty of people would view it 
as just another currency pair. You know, so clearly one thing that affects the price of gold, because it is traditionally quoted in US dollars, is what's the US dollar doing? You know, if we see a run of US dollar weakness, uh, it will push gold up. You know, the same way if we saw the dollar weak against the pound, the dollar's going down, the pound's going up. So what the US dollar is doing also has an impact. Traditionally, gold has been used as a hedge against inflation. So if we have the cost of living rising, one way historically people would try and have some insurance against that is to park their money in gold. Now we've had fairly low inflation in developed economies uh, for some time now, so that's had less of an impact. But if things changed, that's another thing that could possibly help lift uh, the price of gold. I suppose we should mention the demand for, from industry. You know, I mean, gold's most popular use of the actual physical metal is um, to be used as jewellery, but it's also used in electronic devices, uh, cell phones, PCs. It's used in the aerospace industry. Uh, one of its uses there is as a, a lubricant. So this, these are maybe you know, lower tier uses of gold, but you know, this sort of thing can occasionally have something of an impact. And the last one, which again I think is an important one, is market volatility. It's, it, gold is a classic safe haven. If um, stock markets started plunging, for example, then uh, one place that people traditionally see as, as a safe destination for their money uh, is gold. And we've had, we've had rising stock markets for plenty of years now, but if things changed, that's another thing that could make gold more attractive to investors. For an agricultural commodity, let, let's look at coffee. Now, it's a really obvious one, clearly, that's going to affect something like coffee, and that is weather. You know, if we don't get the right amount of rain at the right time and the right amount of sunshine at the right time, we won't have the crops we're expecting. So they're incredibly uh, susceptible uh, to weather forecasts, storms, all this sort of thing. That clearly will have an impact. And also disease as well. You know, if we saw the crops uh, being affected in that way, uh, and there's less coffee getting produced in one year because of the weather or disease or whatever it is, that's clearly going to push the price of coffee up. Politics can also play its part, you know, because uh, of the regions that coffee gets produced in. For example, Brazil uh, is responsible for something like a third of the world's coffee production. After that, I think it's Vietnam. So again, if we saw maybe some changes in government there, or uh, you know, some unrest, that's something that could affect exports from those countries. So it's another thing that people uh, will be watching. Then there's the thing that affects all markets, speculation. You know, people trying to second guess what the effect of weather is, or trading ahead of a crop report, right? referring back to the film Trading Places, of course, where it was um, frozen orange juice, the report they were waiting on. So all of this sort of stuff will drive um, you know, agricultural commodities such as coffee. So there we go, gold and oil, I think, uh, streets ahead in terms of uh, popularity. But it was good to look at coffee there, look at you know, a, a traditional agricultural market and see how it's different. So to bring things up to date, um, let's take a look uh, on the trading platform at these real markets, how to find them, and the sort of moves that we've seen over recent years. Let's take a look at some of these markets, see how they've moved over the years. We're on the platform now, the easiest way of finding them, if you go to the search box at the top, you can see we can actually specify just commodities by clicking here. So here we go. Gold, oil, silver, natural gas, Brent, coffee, sugar, platinum, and so it goes on. So um, let's take a look at some of these markets. So here's the price of oil. This is going back uh, to 2010. You can see we've got the highs up here. Seems a long way away now, but $115 uh, a barrel. This is US uh, crude oil, uh, and then really started sliding from 2014. The last a uh, couple of years have been interesting. We've seen it down as low as $26 a barrel at the time of recording. It was pushing out to its best levels uh, for about three years, trading up in the mid-60s a barrel. So there's our oil price. Let's take a look at gold. So gold had this great run uh, through the early 2000s, uh, topping out just about here, 2011, trading up just shy of $2,000 an ounce. Since then, we've seen a big turnaround. It almost halved. Uh, by 2015. But again, over the last couple of years, we've seen the price of gold starting uh, to come back. And we look at this every week when we do our weekly video on gold. But it's pushing back up at the time of recording, back up to around about $1,400 an ounce, $1,375, the old highs from back in 2016. And finally, coffee. I think, like I said, this isn't a market that, that many retail traders trade. Um, but you can see there's, there's a 
last degree of volatility, we go back to the 2016 highs, up around about 180. Uh, the market now trading um, not too far off these lows from 2017. So again, I think for people who like to look at trends and big levels in the market where sentiment may change, you know, coffee could be an interesting one down here by historical standards going back over the last couple of years. You know, it's currently pretty cheap. Whether that means it's going to get cheaper, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But there's our, there's our longer term chart for the price of coffee. So to many people, you know, particularly if they're trading using charts and technical analysis, a market is a market is a market. That, that coffee one is interesting, for example, because it has come down to historical lows. So maybe that's one uh, you might want to keep an eye on if it's one you're not familiar with uh, in the days ahead. We'll start wrapping things up there. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, uh, just leave us a message in the comments down below. We do read all of them. If you like the video, click on the thumbs up. And um, to never miss out on the various videos we do, if you click on the subscribe button there and just make sure that alarm bell icon down there is clicked, uh, you'll get notified every time we upload a new video. But for this week from me, David Jones and Trading212, we'll leave it there. And I hope you have a good trading week.